In this video, I will be looking at Google OR tools and Python. I already demonstrated Google OR tools for linear programming, where I optimized a linear optimization problem. In this video, I want to look at constraint programming, and I want to apply constraint programming with Google OR, Google OR tools and Python for a job scheduling problem. So the problem I'm facing is that I work in a factory that operates in a three shift model. Um, so we have uh, uh, operations going on for seven days of a week. We have um, an operation that covers 24 hours per day at every day of the week and we operate in three shifts. Currently we have a work pool of five workers um, and there are some constraints to consider such as for example a worker is not allowed to operate or cover two shifts per day. So the the uh, maximum number of shifts that a worker can take is one shift per day. Also, we want to be fair. We want to we want to um, distribute um, the workload in a in a fair way. So an additional constraint we have to consider is that um, it is not allowed to have a difference in the number of shifts. Uh, assigned per worker uh, that is greater than one. So for example, it should not be possible that one worker operates uh, three shifts while another worker only covers one shift. The maximum difference that we want to allow in this problem is one shift. This is a problem that can be solved with constraint programming and we can use Google OR tools for this. Google OR tools provides us um, with a solver for this and also um, provides a modeling um, environment or framework for uh, modeling a problem like this. Constraint programming is an area um, that focuses on finding feasible solutions rather than optimal solutions. So if you remember my linear optimization problem, this problem really focused on optimizing an objective function. In constraint programming, it might uh, it might occur that we don't even have an objective function. For example, in this case, we don't have an objective to maximize. We don't have an objective function. Um, rather, we are just trying to find a job schedule that satisfies uh, all of the constraints that I just mentioned. And this is what the constraint programming can be applied for. So this is an area that aims at narrowing down um, solutions, um, also narrowing down the solution space to a feasible set from which we can then pick a, a feasible solution. And I will demonstrate now how you can use uh, or how you can do this with uh, Google OR tools and Python. You can also find this um, script on my blog. So I posted a link in the video description. If you click that link, it will take you to my blog. And um, from there, you can copy the, the code um, and you can use it as a template for your specific problem. So let me walk you through this. The first thing I'm doing here is that I'm uh, importing CP model from our tools and I'm constructing uh, or declaring an empty model. Um, so I'm calling here the class or constructor CP model and I'm creating this model object. I am then defining an empty dictionary here and I'm also defining the uh, the number of workers, the number of shifts, the number of days, the maximum shifts per day, and the maximum difference in the number of shifts assigned to the workers. So these are some values that I set up and that I will use now throughout um, the, remain, uh, the remaining code. The first thing I'm doing here is that I'm looping through all workers and all days, and I'm looping through all shifts. And um, for each combination of worker, day, and shift, I'm adding an, uh, another element or another entry to the empty dictionary. So what I'm doing here is I'm populating the dictionary. Um, the keys of this dictionary will be tuples that contain the combination of the number of um, uh, the the worker number as the first entry. Um, the second element in the in the tuple will be the the day of the week and the third entry of the tuple will be the shifts um, at that specific day. And for each key, so for each 
a combination of worker day and shift I uh, declare a boolean variable um, that I add to the model so this is a decision variable um, that can be either false or true and here I assign to the name uh, to the variable a name which is shift with ID uh, worker number day number and shift number so after I've executed these lines of code I now populated my dictionary with um, all of the decision variables. The decision variables in this case are boolean variables that can be either false or true and they indicate whether um, the specific worker indicated by a worker number that ranges between 0 and 4 um, is covering a specific shift on a specific day. And I can call the uh, specific decision variable or can get an, a reference to the specific decision variable by entering um, the um, correct a tuple as a key into the dictionary. So by now our model knows the decision variables. What I have to add now are some constraints. The first thing I'm doing here is that I'm adding the constraint that a shift can only be assigned to one worker. So I loop through every day, I loop through every shift, and I add a constraint for every combination of day and shift that states that the sum of uh, all the Boolean variables um, at that day and that shift over all workers has to be equal to exactly one. So this will guarantee that uh, only one worker can cover the specific shift on that specific day. The next constraint or the next set of constraints that I'm adding to the model is that a worker can only cover one shift per day. This is a less than or equal to constraint, so it might also be that a worker is not covering a shift on a specific day. So for this I'm looping through every worker and for every day, and then I'm taking the sum over all decision variables that indicate shifts on that day, and I set this to uh, this sum to be less or equal to 1. This will guarantee that uh, no worker is going to cover uh, two or more shifts on um, a specific day. The next thing I'm doing is that I want to add a constraint that ensures that there is no big difference in the number of shifts assigned to the various workers. More specifically, the maximum allowed difference was one one shift. So I am um, defining the minimum shifts per worker. Um, I'm defining this as the number of shifts per day multiplied with the number of days divided um, by the number of workers. This is a division without um, rest. So um, the uh, uh, the uh decimals will be removed after this operation um, and the maximum number of shifts allowed per worker is then the minimum shifts uh, per worker plus the maximum allowed difference which was in our case one shift so this was the variable up here then looping through every worker um, and I will then um, be deciding on the uh, the uh, assignments. So um, what I start with is I'm setting an uh, an indicator uh, called shifts assigned to the specific worker, and I set it equal to zero. Uh, I loop through every day and every shift, and I'm adding up the decision variables, um, indicating all the possible shifts that could be covered by this specific worker. So I will have a sum here of decision variables that indicate all the possible, potentially possible shifts that this worker could be covering. And I'm adding a constraint to the model that ensures that this sum of possible shifts, the sum of it, which will be the number of shifts that are actually covered by this worker, um, cannot be less than the minimum number of shifts per worker and it cannot be 
uh, greater than the maximum num uh, number of shifts uh, per worker. So these are two constraints that I add per worker. Um, and um, yeah, this is, uh, these are constraints that will be added for every worker um, that we have in the pool. So after this, I have defined all my constraints and the model knows all the decision variables. It knows the constraints um, and I can now uh, I can now solve the problem. For this I will call um, a method that's called search for all solutions. Um, for this I need to declare a solver, so I need to um, call the CP solver class. Uh, I need to create a solver instance um, and setting uh, the linearization level to zero. And then I have to um, create a uh, solution uh, printer that is forwarded to the um, method call for this um, uh, method that searches for all feasible solutions. And for this, I went to, to the uh, Google API and I copied uh, basically um, this, uh, these lines of code I adjusted uh, the names of the variables, but this is basically code that I took from the Google um, documentation for the um, search for all solutions method. Um, what this will do is will um, print um, the uh, the solutions that are found um, by the solver. And um, what this what the solution printer also um, allows me to do is that it allows me to specify the uh, total number of solutions that I want to output. So in my case, for example, I just want to print the first solution. So I set uh, solution range here to be uh, a list that goes um, from zero to one. So this is a one element list that contains the value zero. And I forward this to the um, constructor call for the solution printer class. This will make sure that only the first solution in the, f in the feasible, um, in the set of feasible solutions will be outputted. Um, there are many, many solutions to this problem. Um, and if I wanted to output all of the solutions, um, I would have a very uh, long list of possible sketches. So for this um, example, I just want to output the, the first um, solution in the feasible set. And this is what I'm doing here. So I'm uh, using the reference to the solver instance, um, calling the method search for solutions. I'm forwarding the solution printer object and the model object. The model object contains all of the decision variables and the constraints. Um, and here you can see the first solution in this set of feasible solutions. Um, you can see this is day zero. Um, you can see which worker is covering which shift and which worker is not covering any shift on that day. And um, here's the second day, here's the third day, here's the third day, and so on. If you want to see the list and you, if you want to check that it's satisfying all of the constraints, you can find it by clicking the link in the video description, which will take you to the coding example, um, where you can also copy the script. So this was uh, a simple example for constraint programming. Um, I will be uh, providing some additional examples using Google or tools in upcoming videos.